Uh, my name is uh, Rune Rasmussen. I'm a historian of religion from the University of Uppsala. Uh, and uh, today's May 18th, which here in Scandinavia uh, used to be the holiday of Saint Eric of Sweden. And Saint Eric in some ways is just like some marginal saint, a medieval king who played a role in some clan conflict or something like that in the 12th century. Uh, he was murdered by a man with a very Game of Thrones name, Emund Wolfsbane. Um, but what's interesting about Saint Eric is not so much the, the details about, the historic details about this figure, but the way that the saint seems to reinvent specific motives of Nordic animism. Um, because a little bit like enslaved Africans who have become uh, practitioners of Santeria, voodoo, and who reinvented their uh, traditional polytheist deities into Catholic ch saints. So, uh, so did med medieval Scandinavians also reinvent their traditional polytheism into Christian language with some of these saints. And um, Saint, Eric, Saint Eric of Sweden is one example of this. Uh, and there are others. One is uh, Saint Olaf of Norway, and another is Saint Knut of Denmark. Um, and uh, I might come back and make videos about these figures at some point. But uh, the topic here is uh, Saint Eric, who can be seen as a reinvention of Freyr, the male god of fertility. Um, because there are a number of similarities between these two figures that are simply too characteristic for it to just be coincidental. Um, <clears throat> first, Freya was the patron deity of the ancient kings of Sweden, the Inglingar or Inglings, um, and Saint Eric became the patron deity of the Christian Swedish kings. Freya uh, was, according to manuscript material, uh, there are sources that describe how he was carried, his body or his effigy was carried around in the landscape. And uh, something similar has been done with uh, Saint Eric, um, whose effigy was carried around here on Saint Eric's days, Saint Eric's day over the fields in, in Uppland in, in, in Sweden. And uh, while well, this carrying of effigy is, is perhaps a general European trait, you, know, you also find it in Southern European Catholicism and, by the way, Southern European pre-Christian cults. Um, but, but it's certainly also characteristic of, of Northern Europe. And um, another thing was that Frey was associated with a cult of horses. And there are sources where a Swedish peasant, peasant would go up to Uppsala and sacrifice a horse to Saint Eric. Sacrifice a horse to Saint Eric. It's not a very Christian thing to do, you know, as a, as a sacrifice for having received divine help you know, or something like that. Um, there's also something about the symbolism of uh, Freyr and Saint Eric. Because Freyr uh, was a phallic deity, uh, according to sources such as the German chronicler Adam, Adam of Bremen, uh, and he was associated particularly with the sword also. Um, so phallic and sword. And Saint Eric's symbols was a sword and a branch with budding leaves. So um, all in all, there, there are reasons to see Saint Eric and Saint Eric's day as a, a Swedish example of how Nordic animism is being reinvented in a Christian language and Christian symbolism. In a, in a way that's quite comparable to the way that practitioners of um, religions such as Santeria and Vurun are, they will say that Saint George is really the war god, Ugun, or Brazilians will celebrate and honor the storm goddess, the West African storm goddess, Yansa, on Santa Barbara's day. So uh, Saint Eric was a symbol of fertility that, like Freya, was carried over the fields here in spring, and he was given gilded ears of corn as a sacrifice for the uh, successful harvest. So um, remember Freya here on uh, St. Eric's Day, and uh, happy St. Eric's Day from the North Nordic Animism channel here. Um, also, uh, uh, in order to make this kind of knowledge available about seasonal forms of animism and the way that it has been reinvented, 
uh, I've been working on producing a, a calendar for hanging on the wall that actually communicates this kind of knowledge, a calendar of Nordic animism. And um, it's basically, you know, combines some of these traditional uh, forms of animist season or seasonal animism, you could say, like the traditional month names, traditional holidays such as St. Eric's Day, also the Norwegian uh, Primstaff or Lock calendar symbolism has been used. And um, there's the runic calendar, which uh, I may do a video about at, um, at, uh, at some point. And we, uh, I've been working on making this calendar for 2000, publishing it for 2020, together with Eva Nilsson and uh, Uffe Behrendt from uh, Genungagab Art, whose tattoo art will be showcased in the, the first year of this calendar. So you can follow our work on this Nordic Animist calendar page on Facebook and Instagram. And um, yeah, it'll, at some point it'll be possible to order the calendar. So uh, find us and follow us and um, see you around.